Okay, we spent our time looking at how nations conflict with each other. Now let's take a look at nations cooperating with each other. To go from ultra-nationalism to supra-nationalism. Supra-nationalism is to go beyond national interests or borders. For example, NGOs like the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders are supra-national. They don't let national governments control them. So why do nation states interact with each other? Well, you spent all of Social 10 looking at globalization, which is how our current world is interdependent. For example, our borders go all the way up to the Arctic Circle. We often don't think about this, but that border way up north meets up with a lot of other national borders. So we belong to an organization called the Arctic Council that allows all of those nation states to meet together to discuss issues that affect us all. A bit further south from the North Pole is the Northwest Passage. Canada claims that as part of our territory, and until recently, nobody really seemed to care. It was covered in ice most of the time. But now that the globe is warming, that waterway is opening up and could be an important shipping lane. And many believe there's deposits of natural gas and oil that could be harvested. So now other countries are getting interested, and Canada must do what we can to have international agreements that will recognize our sovereignty over that area. On the opposite side of the globe, we have Antarctica. This piece of land doesn't belong to anyone. The global community agreed that this part of the Earth would be open to anyone so that we could encourage scientific discoveries. But if the globe warms even more and Antarctica becomes more hospitable, do you think some nation states might start arguing that they want to own a piece of land for themselves? Then who or what organization would decide on the borders of that continent? Speaking of borders, those are strange things created by humans, totally artificial, you can't really see political borders from space, and yet we fight over them. We spend millions of dollars protecting them. What if the world didn't have borders? Would that make things better or worse? Okay, let's get back to the idea of international relations and what motivates nation states to participate or not participate in supranational organizations. Our foreign policy demonstrates the motives or goals we have here in Canada. Foreign policy includes the rules that we have when interacting with other nation states. The opposite would be our domestic policy, which deals with the people living in the country. People will often confuse different government policies, so to be sure, when discussing foreign policy, that's dealing with international relations. For example, increasing the sales tax is domestic, while increasing tariffs, which is a tax on imports, is a foreign policy. So let's look at some of Canada's foreign policy goals. In no particular order, let's start with economic growth. It's probably one of the more obvious reasons why nation states want to sign international treaties to encourage trade that can help their economy to grow. An example of a supranational organization that deals with that here in Canada is NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, that reduces the tariffs and other regulations on goods coming from the United States and Mexico. We also belong to the WTO, or World Trade Organization, that helps to create trading relationships and mediate trade disputes. And the G8 or G20 meetings bring world leaders together to discuss a variety of issues, and often there's trade agreements made. Next is peace and security. Canada is very fortunate to belong to the strongest military alliance in the world, NATO, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It was first created after World War II to protect our allies in Europe from the threat of Soviet expansion. Well, the Soviet Union no longer exists, but NATO still does because it works to protect member states from being attacked. If anyone tried to attack Canada, we'd have all of NATO to help us out. NATO also gets involved in international peacemaking missions. We also belong to NORAD, which is the North American Aerospace Defense, and it monitors the airspace over Canada and the U.S. Another motive for international relations is social justice. Many students think this means using the courts, but what we really mean by this term is that we want the world to be fair or just for everyone. We can have humanitarian missions that will help get people out of poverty or deal with a natural disaster. We can also accept refugees or send foreign aid. And while being humanitarians can be seen as a selfless act, it can also help us. For example, if we work to immunize people against certain diseases like Ebola, then the threat of that disease spreading here gets smaller. Also, if we can build up the economy of a region, then they can become a trading partner, which in turn would help out our economic growth. A fourth goal is self-determination or sovereignty. It may seem strange that international relations could protect sovereignty, since that's the right to govern yourself. But by having international agreements, we can ensure that our own interests are protected, that we can achieve both our foreign and our domestic goals. Participating in international organizations can give a country prestige. The largest supranational organization, the UN, works really hard to protect the sovereignty of all nations, sometimes to our frustration, as we saw when we looked at the UN reactions to the acts of genocide in the 90s. Having a safe environment also requires international cooperation. Some students may confuse this with being safe from crime, but what we're talking about here is protecting the environment. We can all see the impacts of increasing pollution and international agreements help to deal with those problems. 
For example, in the past, toxic fumes used to come from the U.S. into Canada, severely impacting our environment because it created acid rain. So we signed environmental treaties with the U.S. to help clean up the air. This leads us to our last motive or goal, to improve our quality of life. We can participate in international exchange programs. Many students participate every year to have a better understanding of other cultures. We do similar exchanges with doctors or scientists so that we can share our ideas. Most Canadians would agree that multiculturalism makes our country better, and this idea can be expanded to participating with other countries in discussions and the creation of international agreements to protect culture. Now, there's also different ways that a nation state can interact in the world. A nation state can choose to be isolationist, which means they don't want to get too involved, like the U.S. was before the World Wars, or Switzerland, who waited until 2002 to join the U.N. because they wanted to make sure they didn't seem like they were choosing sides. There's also the terms unilateral, bilateral, and multilateral. When you're unilateral, you go in and do something yourself. Bilateral would mean that two countries would make an agreement with each other. Foreign aid can help to explain these terms. A nation state may just give the money or goods without any other countries participating, which makes it unilateral. But if that foreign aid is tied, which means there's conditions put on it, like you have to spend the money we give you buying Canadian goods, or you got to do a better job protecting human rights, then that agreement would be bilateral. And often if there's a very serious disaster, then many nations will work together multilaterally to provide the funds to try and help solve the problem. Other actions a nation state can take when dealing with other nation states are sanctions. That's where we punish another country for doing something we don't like. For example, not trading with them. During the apartheid era, most Western nations had sanctions on South Africa as a way to convince them to stop this practice. We can hold diplomatic talks, or create alliances, or we can bring in peacekeepers. Rarely, we will bring in peacemakers, but this leads to full-scale war, which is an international action that most nation states try to avoid. But whatever we do, whether it be providing foreign aid, taking in refugees, applying sanctions, or participating in peacekeeping missions, all of those actions have consequences. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. Earlier I talked about how a nation state's foreign policy can change over time. Here in Canada, there are several different influences on our foreign policy. First is our geography. We are located in the Northern Hemisphere, we have three oceans, and our neighbor happens to be the most powerful country in the world. All of those factors are going to influence how we interact with others and the agreements that we belong to. Our past experiences also play a role. We belong to La Francophonie and the Commonwealth because we were colonized by the French and the British. Our ideologies also influence us and our government leaders, who we elect will determine our foreign policy. In addition, our ideology values democracy, so we'll take on initiatives like helping to be election monitors in areas that struggle with democracy because we're known for having pretty smooth elections. And of course, our status in the world is going to influence the agreements we participate in. We're known as a middle power. We're not a superpower, but we aren't a weak developing nation either. We'll look at the policies of other nations to help us decide what's in our best interest. One of the big issues relating to greater international cooperation is the loss of sovereignty. The reason the Canadian government left the Kyoto Protocol was because they felt that the environmental targets would impact our economy too much and didn't want to be bound to that international agreement. The nation states that belong to the European Union are encouraged to use the EU currency, the euro, but that then takes away some of their sovereignty when it comes to their economy because they have limited monetary controls. So, as you hear me say at the end of almost every video, there's a lot of things to consider when looking at international relations.